Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be looking at a couple of box sets from a game we don't see very often. Games Workshop's Azerite uh, Ruins. Gruffy Crow! Ah! Uh, so I picked this box up a little while back uh, and I've already taken a look. But as you can see this just arrived today and it's all sealed. Uh, we'll look at this one a bit first. As you can see, I've already taken some of the parts off the sprues. It's quite a simple set. It basically comes with uh, two sort of identical sets of the same thing. Uh, so that's two sets of the same two sprues. So you can make a couple of variations on these ruins. Um, and then you get a few extra sort of bits and pieces, like a little trapdoor uh, and a chest. Just this like, you know, stray ruin. If you've handled uh, Games Workshop's terrain bits before, so this kind of reminds me of the same sort of material of the, uh, the stuff from the Kill Team box set. I've got that as well. Uh, it's made of, it's kind of harder, seems a bit weightier than sort of standard Games Workshop plastic. Maybe not quite as detailed as well. A bit sort of uh, tougher on the older sprue cutters. You basically get uh, six sort of parts with these sort of hinges on here, uh, which allows you to make sort of three sort of self-standing ruins. I'm probably, I was initially thinking I was gonna base these, uh, but I think they actually want these ones, they stand up fine I think they look all right. Uh, by themselves, but I probably will still base uh, some of these little bits and do some interesting with those. The reason I picked these up in the first place, uh, I was actually in a games workshop for a change and I uh, fancy picking something up and I quite liked how generic they are. They do have the sort of Sigma uh, Comet on the doorway here, but that's not exactly offensive. I think these will fit in quite a lot of different games. Um, I think Sort of Oathmark and Shadow Deep are probably the sort of thing I'm probably going to end up using them in. Uh, but also, these are going to work absolutely fine for Frostgrave. I'll get some more games of that going. Um, I'm taking the, uh, the second load out of the uh, frames now. And I'm looking at them, there's actually not going to be a lot of cleanup required. Um, just scraping off these nubs where all the uh, connectors were. Uh, and that's just going to be round the outside and then inside the doors and windows where they've put some additional bits in. Basically all of the front and the back, I don't think it's going to require any cleanup or anything like that. Um, so it should be a fairly quick kit to put together. Now I have one little uh, niggle about this already, is that this piece here seems to only want to go together this way. Because if you look at the two sides of this column, they kind of match currently uh, whereas these two also match at the moment but then if you mixed one of these twisty columns uh, on these buildings with the flat columns I don't think that'd look right so I think I'm probably end up with two bits that look exactly like that I'm hoping I can mix these ones up a bit more so that's another one of those and they've got these quite uh, firm sort of grippy joints here, which means that the kit actually doesn't need any glue. I will be gluing it and painting it, obviously, but it's made in this sort of coloured plastic, so that is gripped together really quite tightly. Um, so if you were just starting out, you really wouldn't need much just to have some bits of, of reasonable terrain. There's nothing to stop you mix, mixing these bits and these bits, so you could get that bit more variation. As far as I can tell, they they would fit, you just end up with twisty columns and flat bits. And that aesthetic change bothers me more than having a duplicate piece. All right, let's put these bits to the side now. And have a see what's in the big box. Now, the first thing that struck me as soon as I've opened this is that these pieces are a lot more detailed. Comparing the bricks there and the bricks here, 
hopefully they'll paint up and look the same but there's a lot deeper gaps between them there's a lot more texture there also if i thought i was going to be able to mix and match between these bits and these bits i was wrong because these corners are yeah designed to be glued uh, it's a lot different the patterns on these bits as well are obviously a lot more uh, age of sigma here yeah, this is quite clearly a sort of storm cast i still think this terrain will work sort of quite well it's still fairly neutral um if you don't care about you know if you didn't know that was a storm cast and you'd never heard of age of sigma it just looked like a genuine sort of you know quasi-religious looking carving and nothing on the bell tower or anything like that sort of gives it away i like the uh the big wide steps here i do wonder oh yeah look at that you could actually you can actually balance sort of base and this is a metal model as well so at the angle it would be yeah quite well so that's quite a cool design it's gonna be good for something like uh frostgrave the extra level of detail does con you know transfer over to this so that's good and then some of the patterns there once again the detail appears to be a bit sharper on the gray but could just be the plastic color but yeah there's very similar architecture so the two kits are going to blend in uh, which is good and looking across these sprues there only appears to be one of each part so it's a lot less modular uh, and, and a lot less repetitive than the other kit we just looked at uh, so that's good one last thing i will say um before i build these up is that the gray plastic seems much more like the sort of games workshop plastic i'm used to it seems a bit softer um just sort of comparing the cuts between the two definitely seems easier to cut through the gray um i said it does appear to hold a slightly higher detail so i wonder if this is yeah as i say more similar to the regular kit plastic and this is something different they've used on this sort of starter terrain so yeah i'll get all this built up and i'll take a look at what it all looks like together Okay, so I have built up all of the bits and pieces, including the sort of random bits. And some of the smaller random bits I have left, just because I think they'll stand up quite nicely. And that'll make a, just an interesting little bit of terrain on its own. Whereas some of the smaller bits I have actually based up. And some of the bits from the, the other kit. And what I'm intending to do with these is add some bushes and trees uh, and sort of make these a bit more sort of interesting. Uh, and individual sort of actual blocking features. I also found like a little skull just lying around on my gaming table. Don't know where it was from, but I've just added it on there. And if this would be the point now, if I was going to add any other little bits and pieces and greebles, uh, nothing too exciting though, because I said I want this to be generic a terrain as possible. Uh, I've also based up the little treasure chests, which I'll use as objectives probably. Also, apart from going around and removing all of the sprue connections and any sort of, of the worst mold lines that I could see, I've also gone and added some sand just at the top of some of these columns, just to give some of the flattest bits a little bit of texture. Um, and I'll sort of dry brush that all more or less just the same. Um, and I think that will just add that little bit of extra sort of texture and detail uh, that these tops of these might have been lacking before. And I've done the same here any parts that I thought were relevant. So this has already got kind of like a stone texture on top, uh, but these bits were a bit sort of bare and uh, like I didn't really like the way they looked. So I've just added those little bits of sand. That was just with a bit of PVA. And I've built this as it is on the box. Uh, I, I didn't put any of the sort of skeleton bits because I don't know, I don't want to over skeleton things. Uh, I've kept those though for later, uh, but I think that'd be quite a cool bit of terrain. I'm not so sure about this sort of dead end section, not sure how useful that'll be, uh, but the general sort of size and shape and double height of this, uh, is, well the double height is part of the reason I bought it, uh, but I think that'll be a, a really good bit of terrain for Frostgrave uh, and any other sort of skirmishy games, probably even Stargrave to be honest. Same here, we've got a nice big sort of objective, um, doesn't take up much room on the table, um, but if you're playing things, yeah, skirmishy games, you've got two levels. I can imagine put me putting a uh, little Frostgrave sniper character up there. I have put the skeletons in this time. I think that works all right. I don't think that over skeletonizes it. Um, for a Games Workshop piece of terrain, there is a, a general less skulls than I'm used to. So actually it works out all right. I do have another one of these on the way. 
as a separate sprue that I want off eBay at a pretty uh, affordable price. Uh, I'll have to see what that's like when it turns up, see if I can reconfigure it in any other way. In fact, I'm probably going to save these bits because I think I might be able to sort of potentially on how I reconfigure it, these might work as second stories. And here it is, uh, the second identical sprue. Uh, so this is one of the ones that came on one of those magazines. And actually, if I follow these instructions, I've noticed this does actually go together differently and doesn't have that weird dead end. And it should give me at least one place I could put one of these. So I'm actually gonna give my imagination a rest and follow these instructions uh, and make it up like they suggest in the magazine. All right, I'm just gonna, I've got all the bits snipped off now and I'm just gonna go around and clear them all up before I put anything together. I think I must have lost track where everything came from last time because we've got another one of these bits. Uh, so that's exactly the same. Uh, so I thought this was off the third sprue like this one, uh, but no, it must have been off this one as well. So I'll probably try and use one in this build and then basically one maybe. Okay, I'm comparing this to the other one and I'm really torn about where to put this top bit. So I put it there because it looks like it should continue on and then it sort of just overflaps that edge and I don't like that at all, which is the way to do it in the instruction. But if I move it around to this side, then it's more or less in the same place as it was on that one. Notice these are slightly different colours as well. Then I thought I could put the this bit here across the front and then that would look radically different. So for, on top of this column, I'm going to need to make a new one of these brick sections. Initially I was going to make it out of plastic card, but we've got these big lumpy bits in the middle of these sprues. So I'm just wondering if I can remove those. And then that happens to be the right sort of thickness there. I'm just taking my sprue cutters and just clipping off all the sprue looking -y bits. And I've got my knife. I'm going to further go around and I'm going to, these ones have got like little carved edges. So I'm just going to go around and do that. And then because it's kind of shiny in the top at the moment, I'm going to give it a, just a scrape all the way over. And then we have a sort of stone. And that's enough for my little foot to sit on there. I think I might make another one for just in there. Oh, actually, I just found this bit that I uh, based up. And I think that'll look quite good there. If I can extract it from the base, I think that'll look quite good. There we go, something a bit like that. So my least favorite bit of this is this really flat boring bit over here. I'm still playing around with ideas how I could fix that. I think because I've got two of these, I'm going to try and put a bit here. Uh, so I need it to be more ruined on this column end. I'll have to make some more little uh, stones for it to sit on. But I think that'll sit quite nicely there. So now that this is all dry, I've rammed some bits of sprue in those gaps and I've gone around and I've put a few bits of PVA just to hide some of the worst sins and boring bits. Since it dried I have spotted one little bit I don't necessarily like and that's the fact this stone goes over the wood. Uh, but I don't know, I'm not going to criticise how they built their weird structures. Maybe it was a part of a door frame. Uh, but I'm really happy with the way this sort of random column sort of stuck out and, and this bit looks completely natural. So yeah, pretty happy with that. Okay, so I'm gonna wait till this dries and then the next stage is gonna be a Halfords gray primer undercoat on the whole lot. All right, all the main parts have been undercoated gray. Uh, or maybe not the best undercoat job in the world, but it'll do. Uh, and they're looking really smart. It's really bright out some of these details. The smaller bits that I based, I've actually been using to sort of experiment with the paint scheme we're gonna use. And I'm pretty happy with the way they've come out. I quite like that look. Uh, and that is Mechanicus, Dawnstone, Celestia. I've had a little play with the other colours. Uh, so, hand handily, these bits actually gave me quite a good few different options about what uh, colours I can try. Uh, so, yeah, I'm happy with some of the metals are coming out, 
we had a little play with some of the way I'm going to do the bone. And the other main part is these bricks, which is basically this Mornfang brown with a bit of a wash. And I'm probably going to do a bit more of a, a lighter dry brush on them. And I'm happy with the way they're coming out as well. But I think I need to go a little bit lighter on the wash than the rest of them. I think that's quite a striking uh, difference. I mean, that's all up the side of the building. I should uh, give a bit of visual difference rather than everything just being flat grey. So now I need to get on with painting the big bits. Uh, so yeah, as I said, starting with the Mechanicus. And obviously it would take all day with my normal sort of Games Workshop brush. So I've got this nice big makeup brush that I'm going to use. Just dab a little bit of paint on there and then I can really move that around. And I can keep spreading that and get a really nice thin coat. I can use the nice long bristles to get into all these little holes and gaps. I can actually do the little spit one a little bit stiffer than this actually, for the first base coat. As you can see, this is not going to take me much time at all, and I really like this colour. All right, even with a relatively big brush, this is taking forever. It's going on real nice. Um, I've thinned the paint down quite some way now as well, which is making it even more uh, quick to put on and even more matte, if not quite as rich as it was before. And these parts from the second kit definitely drink in a lot more paint than the more simple parts as well. Uh, so this is probably going to take me a day or two to get through. Okay, all my pieces are this nice dark grey now. And I said I think it really does improve the details. So next up is going to be the Dawnstone. And this isn't going to be a dry brush in the strictest sense. I'm going to cover quite a lot. But whereas in the last layer, I spent quite a lot of time trying to get into all the nooks and crannies. This time I'm going to make sure that we kind of just roll straight over them. So it's quite subtle, but we're taking it from this to this. And this should be a lot quicker to do than the last layer. Because as I said, we're not necessarily trying to get a really solid colour here. A bit of texture in the stone's not going to hurt. And we're not trying to get into all those nooks and crannies. I'm absolutely loving the way it's bringing these details out as well. Okay, so that's all the Dawnstone and all the parts. Uh, next up will be the Celestia Grey. And this will be a much lighter dry brush to really pick up all those edges. But for it to be really crisp, I really want this last layer to really sort of completely dry. At the moment, I'm picking these bits up and obviously the paint's not smudging or anything, but it, they do feel kind of uh, not entirely cured. So I'm gonna leave them another night just to completely set in place uh, before we do the light gray. Okay, so these are looking very different. I've left the grey in some of the cracks because I think that will look a bit like mortar. And obviously we're going to wash it and stuff as well, which will uh, change the way that looks. Uh, but yeah, these are looking ace like this. It's a nice, good contrast. And next up we're going to look at the wood. So there's only a couple of these ones that have got the same wooden decking. And there's quite a bit more wood on the church bell thing. I'm going to start this off with uh, foundry paint. I'm not a big fan of these, but I've got what I've got at the moment. So, uh, oh, this actually one's actually covering quite nicely over the grey. So, fill in all these sections uh, with this, and then I'll give him a dry brush of sandry dust, and then I'll wash all the wood and all of the bricks as well at the same time. Okay, all the wood's done, uh, and I started the bell in this aptly named Screaming Bell. Uh, on this guy as well, there's a few of these sort of metal ring pulls, um, and there's a few more of the sides of these buildings. Uh, I'm going to do these in a kind of rusted metal effect, so I'm actually going to also start these with the, uh, the Mornfang Brown from before, and use a bit of orange like this, and uh, start that off as the base of some rust. To be honest, I think we'll try and keep everything the same, so I'm probably going to do this banding up here as well, uh, in the same sort of rusty effect. Okay, with the wood dry brushed, I'm also going to use the same Zandri dust on these skeletons. And there's one or two spare skulls just kicking around the place as well that I added 
And I think the commonality of the colours and the contrast are actually working quite nicely. And the more details we add to this grey, I think the better the grey looks as well. And there we go. We're going to go around the metal parts with some of this uh, Kalo Red highlight. And I'll spackle it on a bit like this, essentially using a sponge. And then all of those areas, the bell, the wood, the bone, everything gets a wash then. So now the wash is on and dry. All the bits that I did wood uh, with the with the wash, I'm going to give a sandry just dry brush uh, just to really sort of brighten up them up and bring those details uh, back out on the tops. And I'll re-dry brush the uh, skeletons with the sandry dust as well probably, and the bell with the brass colour I used. Uh, so just basically re-highlighting uh, the bits that we washed. Okay, and as you can see, this dry brush is making all the difference, really pulling those uh, contrast out on these wood grain. All right, on the bricks uh, that have gone a little bit shiny from the wash, I'm using a mixture of the Mournfang Brown and some Menoth White Base Ivory Colour. Um, sort of mixing that up, and we're taking them from that kind of colour back to something a bit brighter, something a bit like that, bringing out all those details again, and I think they look great. And I'm still using a fairly large brush here, about the width of the uh, the windows, so it's not taking much effort at all, just to drag this down and uh, sort of highlight those bits up. I've not been super, super tidy uh, with the washers and the various bits and pieces here. Uh, but that's all right, because the whole thing's a ruin, so it would be a little bit dirty, I guess. I think that adds to the general weathering of the, uh, the whole piece. Okay, the metal parts that have had the rust effect, I'm just going around and just putting a few little flecks of, uh, of darker silver, just roundabouts, just so you can see that they're metal. But I see most of it's covered in the, the reds and the oranges. So I've dry brushed the bell in the original copper colour and then given it a bit of a, a highlight dry brush in the Retributor armour. Uh, but that's obviously far too shiny now, uh, so I'm going to have a bit of an experiment with this uh, Nikola Oxide, the technical paint. Uh, this can go badly wrong, so I'm going to be really sparing with it. Alright, so I'm just putting this in the sort of crevices uh, and I'm then I'm trying to wipe a lot of it back off again as well, just because I don't want it to, uh, to sort of overpower the gold. Alright, a little bit of the technical paint looked awful, so I've actually gone for loads of it. Uh, and actually that is an improvement on how bad it looked a second ago. I've also just tried to rub a little bit off uh, so we can expose some of these bits. Um, but I'm not sure how we're going to completely recover that. So I'm going to try maybe a bit of null oil. This is a complete experiment, guys. Alright, well that wash is drying on the bell. Um, I've also gone over with some sort of ivory and some then almost white on the tops of these skeletons. And uh, I think they've come out quite nicely as well. And apart from that bell, I'm pretty happy with the way these have come out. They're pretty much done. Um, all the brickwork looks fine, we've got all the little metal parts. And the other two of these simple ones are, uh, there's no other colours on them, they're just the grey. Okay, putting the rest of the rings aside for a second. These grates, I think they come out quite nicely, a little bit shiny fix in a second. They're kind of a bit pointless because they don't go anywhere. You just see the ground underneath. So to that end, I've printed off some little trapdoor patterns. The camera's not picking them up very well, but yeah, little deep trapdoors. I'll uh, lay the printer. And then I'll put them on a bit of stiff card. And then I'll glue that underneath there. In this little sort of recess. And then, at worst, it'll just look dark. And at best, you can kind of see the nice little wall patterns. And like it disappears off somewhere. And here's what the bell ended up looking like with the black wash on. Very grubby, and you can kind of see all that uh, sort of technical paint in all the crevices. And actually, yeah, I think I quite like the end result. I might still go over that with a green wash, potentially. Uh, the whole bell tower looking good with the skeletons. And here is what the terrain sets together look like on a, well this is kind of a six foot by three and a bit foot table. Um, not quite full size. This is what I've been playing Overmark on recently. And as you can see this is probably, in my view, too much terrain for a game of Overmark. Though I do have it all lined up in the middle. I think it's looking really nice. And obviously at a glance, you're certainly not going to be able to instantly tell this is Age of Sigmar terrain. Really, unless you get real close. 
And even then, sort of, they're just generic paladins or something, aren't they? And I will be adding more stuff to these bases, uh, probably some trees and such. But I need to work out exactly how I'm doing that. Um, but all the little accessories look quite good next to this stuff. And I am quite the fan. I'm really happy with the way the sort of two-tone bricks and stone came out. And yeah, I think all in all they're looking quite striking on a sort of fantasy battlefield. But I think as you can see, if you want to use them in a more sort of sci-fi setting, uh, as I probably will be in some, something like Five Parsecs or even Stargrave, um, I think these guys can kind of work as old... I mean, they're just ruins, aren't they? So uh, I don't think they're necessarily limited to being used in fantasy games either, which is quite... and um, makes them quite versatile. So all in all, I am really happy with them. I'm happy with the came out. I'm happy with the uh, the kits. Uh, and it's a recommend from me if you can get hold of them. Uh, but sadly, I think a lot of these bits are unavailable now. And that's all for this video. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, maybe subscribe for more. And as ever, thanks for watching. Bye.